Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. Where are you? We lost one. Okay, so if you've been watching my channel, uh, the hair. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that this is one of my all-time favorite sunscreens. I'm obsessed with it. It was actually the first mineral tinted sunscreen that I had ever tried. So I, you know, dipped my feet in with an amazing sunscreen. I just love this so much. And I was thinking about it and realized that I haven't ever done an in-depth review just on this sunscreen for you guys. I've brought it up in other videos, specifically my tinted sunscreen video that I will link below if you're curious, where I swatched quite a few different tinted options, but but I've never just highlighted this and I also had a request to compare it to their glow formulation and their bronze formulation. So that is exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk about the ingredients, how they differ or maybe don't differ between the three and I will show you guys swatches. So I will show swatches of each of these sunscreens on their own, separately, individually. And I also do a little bit of mixing as well. If you're curious what some of them look like mixed together, maybe you wanna to try to add bronze to the glow or to the original to kind of customize your shade, I will show you what that looks like. So if you wanna hear and see everything that I just talked about, you are in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so some high level info on this sunscreen. Again, it's called their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. It's a broad spectrum SPF 50 and it has a PA rating of plus, plus, plus. The highest that the PA grading scale goes is PA plus, 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 plus. I talked about that in depth in my Skin Aqua Asian Sunscreen review. I'll put a card for that here and link it below if you wanna know more about the PA grading scale. Essentially, it just measures protection against UVA rays. So not the full max here, but almost, three out of four. It says it has chemical-free active ingredients. It's 100% mineral, that means the same thing. It's water and sweat resistant for 40 minutes and this one has 1.8 fluid ounces in it and retails for $39, which is the same thing for both of these as well. On the back, it says it's designed with EnviroScreen. I don't know if they trademarked that technology, to provide invisible 100% mineral protection from environmental aggressors such as UVA and UVB, pollution, blue light, and infrared radiation. Patented ingredients and a hydrating antioxidant rich mineral formula. I don't know why that was hard for me to say. Nourish the skin and protect against free radicals that contribute to skin damage. Total protection in an elegant texture that blends invisibly into a weightless finish. And then the active ingredient here is actually the same in all three of these and it's 12% zinc oxide. So I know that that's great news for a lot of you that are sensitive to chemical filters because we don't have any present and zinc oxide is also the only filter that's going to provide us protection against all three forms of UV rays. So the short and long wavelengths of UVA rays or the rays that cause aging and UVB rays or the rays that cause burning. Yes, there are other filters out there that help to provide us protection against those, but zinc oxide is the only one that's approved for use in the US that gives us protection against all three in one. I love zinc oxide as long as it doesn't leave a white cast, which we'll get to. So let's get into some of the ingredient highlights. I also realized I had never really dug into every single ingredient for this sunscreen and the way that I have for every other product that I've reviewed here, because again, this was the first one that I had ever tried. I did look at the ingredients and know that it was free from fragrance and irritants, but that's kind of as far as I got with it. I mean, I had looked at some of it, but I hadn't dug into it in depth. So I was excited to see what really was going on here. And no surprise, there are some really, really nice ingredients. The first, which is probably the most noteworthy in my opinion, because I think it's my favorite ingredient of the moment, is niacinamide. I'm sure a lot of you could guess that. I'm obsessed with niacinamide because it's such a versatile skincare ingredient. So many different benefits, whether you suffer from large pores, oily skin, acne, irritated skin, aging skin, it's going to help with all of that. It helps to decrease sebum production, so if you're incredibly oily or acne prone, that's a great property. It's going to help to decrease the size and appearance of pores. It's going to help to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, help to soothe the skin. 
I love niacinamide. So that's an ingredient that actually is more towards the top of the label. The reason that I wanna bring that up is because I know that there are some of you that are irritated by too much niacinamide. It's not within the top five, so it's not going to make up the bulk of the formulation, but it's in there. So just be aware of that. There are some really nice skin soothing ingredients in this that may help to offset that if it normally is an issue for you. Of course, I can't predict how your skin will respond, but that is a nice added benefit in case that's an ingredient that sometimes causes sensitivity. As far as emollients and skin conditioning ingredients goes, there's not a ton that I wanna highlight here. This does have quite a few different forms of dimethicone, which is going to help to soften and smooth the skin, make the sunscreen feel very, very nice and silky smooth, and also help to prevent moisture loss. It does have sunflower seed extract as well, which is going to help to condition and soften the skin. But again, there's nothing really else that I wanna talk about in the emollient category because I feel that the best part of this ingredient label is really the hydrating and skin soothing ingredients. So let's dive into that piece. The first two that I'm gonna mention are primarily known for their ability to help to hydrate and plump the skin, not so much in the skin soothing category. And those are glycerin and propanediol. We've talked about both of those ingredients before they're just going to help to make our skin look healthy and hydrated this also has an antioxidant in it that's supposed to have better hydrating abilities than hyaluronic acid and hyaluronic acid is supposed to be able to hold up to 1,000 times its weight in water and that ingredient is called snow mushroom so again that has antioxidant properties as well as really really nice hydrating benefits and then as far as some of those really nice skin soothing ingredients that I think deserve a mention we have elantoin which is a skin skin protecting and smoothing ingredient. We also have bisabolol, which is something that is actually derived from chamomile that has anti-inflammatory properties. This has vitamin E, which aside from having antioxidant properties as well, is something that's going to help to decrease redness. And then this has an ingredient called betaine, which is another hydrating protecting ingredient. So that's basically everything that I wanna highlight on this ingredient label. I shouldn't say basically everything because we have some really nice ingredients here. I love that we have a focus on hydrating and soothing and calming the skin. It's something that I'm definitely drawn to because I definitely have skin that can become irritated easily. The one other ingredient that I do want to give a quick mention to is iron oxides. Iron oxides are a great addition to any sunscreen because they're actually going to more effectively protect our skin from developing hyperpigmentation and melasma and also from visible light. So I always like sunscreens with iron oxides. Okay, now let's talk about how that compares to the glow and bronze formulation. Maybe you are mostly interested in purchasing one of these instead of the original, but you are concerned that you're not going to get the same benefits. The good news is that that's not the case. All of the beneficial ingredients that we just talked about are also ingredients that you're going to find on both of these labels, which I was very happy to see. Really the biggest difference is just the type of pigment that's used in each of these to produce that different color, but it's really nothing that I need to dive into because the types of pigments that are used are not going to be things that cause irritation or sensitivity. So I feel like we don't really need to dive into it, you know? They just have different kinds of pigment. And there are a couple other differences on the labels aside from that pigment, but it's like two to three ingredients. And again, it's really not anything worth mentioning. So you're pretty much getting the same thing across the board here. Okay, now let's compare each of the three colors. So as you can see here, the original definitely has a very peachy tint to it before it's blended into the skin, which is something that I was super nervous about at first because I do not have any peach in my skin. I have warm undertones or yellow undertones, not peach at all. So I was a little bit worried that that would just look off on my skin, but it definitely doesn't at all because like it says, it actually does truly just blend in invisibly on me. At first, it kind of looks like it has that tint but once you let it sit into the skin and fully absorb at least on my skin it does just kind of go away it's invisible so keep in mind of course I'm very fair I think if you are fair to medium in skin tone this is something that you could get away with if you have deeper skin tones than that I would say skip this and go for the bronze formulation for sure I actually do have a video up talking through how you can figure out your undertone and how you can use makeup to complement your skin's undertone I'll link that below and put a card for it here I know that that can be super confusing so just quick side note that's available to you guys if you were like what are you talking about how do you know that you're warm toned so I wanted to directly compare that on my face to the glow formula 
I'm not going to put this bronze one all over my face because it's far too dark for me, but I do actually use it as bronzer, which we'll get to. But for the side-by-side -side comparison on my face, I thought it would be helpful to actually show you guys the glow and the original right next to each other. So the glow formula definitely has much more of a yellow undertone. That is truly a warm undertone. So maybe right there, you guys are able to distinguish between those two. And aside from the yellow undertone, it also has quite a bit of a glow to it as well, which makes sense since it's called their glow formula. And I think this is one that definitely is pretty, but not for everybody. I think if you have super oily skin, this is probably one that you're going to want to stay away from because it really, really illuminates the skin. Or if you have skin that has maybe a lot of texture or fine lines, this also may be something that you want to avoid because it's definitely going to highlight those things, if you will. So if you are looking for something that's really going to help to illuminate the skin, give you a really healthy, fresh glow, I would say go for it. If you have dry skin, I think you might be obsessed. It's really pretty. It's not something that I would continue to reapply on my skin throughout the day because I lean oily. It just, no, no. It would end up looking way, way, way too dewy on me. It would start looking greasy. But in combination with the original or any of my other sunscreens, I think it's really, really beautiful and it really helps to give any sort of makeup that you put on top of it a healthy, luminous glow. So where you could get away with this if you're oily is if you're using a super mattifying foundation on top of it. This will help to kind of just bring it back to life a little bit without making that foundation look oily. So all of these, because they're the same formula, work beautifully underneath makeup. It's just going to kind of depend on either your skin tone or what you're looking for. So if you're super oily, I would say go with the original. If you're dry, go with the glow. If you're kind of in between, you could do either. I do enjoy both. And also quickly before we move on to the bronze formula, I just have to say one of the reasons that I love this sunscreen so much is because of the way that it actually feels. So the formulation of the product, it is so hydrating, so silky smooth, not greasy at all. It doesn't feel heavy. It's so good. It's definitely not the lightest weight sunscreen that I own. So if you do have some Asian sunscreens that are super, super lightweight, liquidy, kind of traceless, that's not what you're gonna get here, but I still think it feels amazing. I do enjoy sunscreens like that, but something about this, just the way that it makes my skin feel moisturized, I really am drawn to. I find myself reaching for it all the time. So I love this formula. Okay, now let's move on to the bronze color. So this one I actually think is a really great color choice for them. I actually do have a video up on their Sun Forgettable Color Balms. I'll link that one below if you guys are curious. The bronze shade there definitely leaned much more pink, which is just not something that's as universal. This one I would say is much closer to neutral, maybe slightly warm in undertone, but something that I think is going to work for a lot more skin types than that color balm situation that we had going on in that video. Yikes. So again, this is not one that I put all over my face, but I really wanted to test it out for you guys as a bronzer because they do say it's for darker skin tones, but also for those of us that are looking for a boost of warmth. So it is something that you could mix into the original formulation or the glow formulation. I'll show you guys swatches of that in a second but I felt like it would make a really good cream bronzer. So I wanted to test that out here and it did. I thought this was perfect, at least on me. This is the perfect shade for bronzer when I am fair like this. And I think it's super pretty. It blended out really nice. It didn't mess up my makeup underneath it. That's something that can happen for me with certain cream products. It'll kind of pull and tug and just remove some of the makeup that I have under. I'm actually wearing the Ordinary Serum Foundation. I have a review for that already up. If you have not seen that yet, I'll put a card here and link it below. Um, mm. Go check out that video if you want to hear my thoughts. But that's the foundation that I have underneath. And this, where is it? Bronze sunscreen worked so well as a bronzer on top. I was very impressed. And then I wanted to show you guys here what it looked like after I powdered my face because another thing that can happen to me with cream bronzers or products that I use for cream bronzing is that once I use setting powder, which I always need to do, 
it will really remove a lot of that color and make me feel like I just need to end up going on top of that with a bit of powder bronzer anyway. And then it's like, what's the point of that added step? But I felt like it held up really well under this powder. I don't know, you guys. I loved using this as a bronzer, actually. So if you're looking for a really nice cream bronzer that also gives you sun protection, this is definitely one worth checking out. I think it does a really great job. Okay, so now let's jump into the swatches that I did for you guys on the back of my hand so you can kind of see how they look next to each other. So here I just have all three of those laid out so you can see. Keep in mind, they're not fully blended into my skin. So that original formulation looks really light and peachy. But again, you guys saw on my face, once it's blended in, it doesn't have that color to it anymore. So same kind of thing with the glow formula. I just thought that that would be the best way for you guys to actually compare and contrast the colors. And then I wanted to add a little bit of the bronze shade to the glow and the original in case you were looking to deepen either of those colors, give them a little bit of warmth. This is what that looks like. I think it looks beautiful in the glow formulation. The original on the back of my hand, I just feel like those colors don't complement each other that well but I feel like once it's blended into the face it would look totally fine again it's just because I have that really highly concentrated there and it's not blended in so and then the last swatch here is the original mixed with the glow because that's actually something that I love to do is to use both of those together I'll do one application of the glow or the original first it doesn't really matter and then use a second application of whichever one I did not use and I find that that's a really beautiful combination underneath makeup or without makeup two applications of the glow again is just a little bit too much glow for me so that's it for the swatches and that is it for this review I hope that this was helpful for you guys and that you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That really helps me out to support my channel and also helps to make sure that you don't miss out on my next video, which will be up in a few days because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. If there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments below and also let me know if you have this sunscreen or if you don't, if you're interested in purchasing it after watching this video. Very curious to hear your thoughts. We can chat below. I know that quite a few of you have purchased it after watching my videos where I recommend it and you're in love, which always makes me so happy. If you are interested in purchasing any of these sunscreens, I will have links in my description box below for you to purchase from. No pressure, of course, but if you do decide to use those links, I do make a small commission, which helps to make sure that I can continue to purchase products to review for you guys, which is very much appreciated. But again, no pressure. So... My next video will be up in a few days. We will chat soon. Until then, I hope you have a great few days.